Ascension forecast for Sunday, May 5th to Saturday, May 11th. Okay, so let's do a rundown of what got thrown at us last week. Of course, we had Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, shift into her rulership in this Taurus energy on the 29th. That definitely added to a little bit more extra weight, extra heaviness, if you will, making us present, making us anchored into our physical body. Why? Because we have to connect to the five senses. We have to explore different ideas, different options, different alternatives in our mind space in order to get a heart space reaction. We have to listen to how the physical body actually reacts to some of the ideas that we're currently bouncing in between that took place on the 29th not even just one day later we have mars the masculine energy the god of war ruling over our physical energy our drive our passion our desire take up his rulership in aries energy so that was a major shift in mood and attitude and especially with mercury ruler of the mental plane still in aries energy we've seen a lot of people spit in fire a lot of anger rise to the surface of the majority of the collective when realistically speaking the agitation, the anger, the frustration should be used as a fuel source at this particular point in time to make a great change, to make a great transformation instead of allowing it to be a destructive energy. So it's a very interesting dynamic that we have the feminine divine, the masculine divine in their respective rulerships. Again, kind of low, slow, steady, realizing what our heart wants, needs, and desires with Venus in this Taurus energy. And we're hot to trot, ready to hit the gas in that nitro button with Mars in this Aries energy. We want to just take action. We want to make moves, but we are going to have to pace ourselves. Of course, that was the ending of April. We shifted into May. That brand brought a brand new energy, brand new chapter, brand new life lessons that we're still trying to really figure out at this point. Let's be honest, we don't have as much clarity as we would like. We're still trying to figure things out. That's okay. We have a new moon in Taurus that's going to help reveal the finer details of the initiating steps that we're going to need to take. But of course, that first day of May was also kind of overlapping with the last quarter moon in Aquarius energy. And of course, the last quarter moon is a reflection back into this case to the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy that we had on April 8th. And we were seeing things from the bigger, broader perspective. We're operating from a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness. We're acting as the observer, stepping away, seeing ourselves and our lives and our energy and our actions as a third party so that we can be more objective to see where it is that we got too caught up in earthly matters, too caught up in reactive egoic patterns and looping behaviors. And where it is that we need to do better, where we have to boss up, where we need to improve, where we are essentially starting to see what it is that, again, is keeping us very attached and connected to the old version of self and therefore the old round, the old reality, the old ways of doing things. And this epiphany, this awareness is giving us a bigger, greater, grander insight on who it is that we currently are, this new version of self. Yeah, we might be uncomfortable and unfamiliar with this new version of self, but there's a new mood, there's a new attitude taking over. And ultimately, we are just kind of focused on what we don't want, what we no longer want to experience, what we have to wrap up, so to speak, in order for us to start something new, something fresh, something more encouraging and supportive and happy and abundant that, of course, is going to be 100% revealed as we move through this new moon in Taurus energy. And of course, we had Pluto, the great transformer himself, go retrograde at two degrees in Aquarius energy. And so that was a major intensity pop off. I've heard from a lot of my clients that have found themselves in some uncomfortable situations, even with strangers projecting just hate and frustration out into the world. And of course, our energies are popping off because the whole point of Pluto is to show us where it is that we either do or do not have 
have power and control over our own damn selves. Side note, many people are already failing this lesson, so it should be a very interesting five-month journey of empowerment, especially when so many people got off to the wrong foot to this particular life lesson. So this week, all we really have going on is the new moon in Taurus that, of course, will be popping off on the 7th or the 8th, depending on the time zone that you're at in the world. Um, and when I say only the new moon in Taurus, I say that with some hesitancy because this is a very important, I'm going to call it moon event, uh, mostly because A, we are officially closing the door on eclipse season and those eclipse energies, and B, Taurus energy is where we build, where we create, where we bring something new to life that is going to be a long-term goal, a long-term vision, a long-term dream. It's going to require some slow and steady effort and energy from us to actually see the true vision actually manifest. But because we have been in this awkward period of adjustment, because we're growing more and more let's call it uncomfortable with the old version of self and the old way of doing things. The new moon in Taurus is giving us an anchored and grounded energy to actually channel in our higher selves into the physical vessel, into the physical form. It's like integrating and amalgamating that expansive soul energy that we've been working on through the eclipse energy. And as you know, last week and the week before, we've been trying to stuff this, let's call it, um, exponentially bigger level of awareness in our soul self back into the physical form. And that's why when we first entered into Taurus season, many of us were feeling very uncomfortable. We were even feeling like old pains, old traumas, old ailments actually like, you know, be triggered and activated for our awareness. And a lot of that is because the Taurus energy allows us to integrate. And I can't even remember what forecast I rattled this off in, but essentially the first part of Taurus season was supposed to be uncomfortable as we kind of stuffed this, you know, greater, grander, energetic soul self back into the vessel. Uh, we were going to feel the aches and pains. I said that, you know, around the new moon in Taurus, that's when we're going to be a little bit more present, a little bit more aware, a little bit more familiar with this new version of self and therefore find a lot more peace and comfortability and contentment within our physical form. And then we're going to get to building. And so by the time we actually enter into the last sector of Taurus season, we are going to be yeah, tunnel vision on what it is that we need to do, what it is that we have to do, pursue, what we have to build, what we have to create. So this new moon in Taurus is kind of like setting the tone giving us like the, the plans, the strategy, if you will, on the baby steps, because again, slow and steady wins the race, the baby steps that we are going to take over the next couple of weeks to actually bring forth a brand new chapter, bring forth brand new aspects, whether it's, you know, routines or a new level of self-worth or a new mood, new attitude for advocating for yourself, uh, a new way of operating in your relationship dynamics. Again, putting your own wants, needs and desires back at the top of the list, uh, initiating new, let's call it ideas where we can build on our income where we can kind of create a new financial stability of sorts and of course all of this is just the initial blueprint of the long-term goals visions and plans that we are now looking to manifest so i say that we only have the new moon and taurus going on but realistically speaking the days kind of leading us up to that new moon is building cultivating that energy that inspiration that motivation that determination in order to actually jump into something new and see it through and then post new moon in taurus we are going to have a lot of moon days to help us get emotionally in alignment to do what we have to do to clean up the loose ends of the past and officially start taking action, start making moves, start making a forward movement on a new path in a new direction, according to a new plan. So there are minor astrology aspects going to be taking place throughout the course of this week to help kind of get our juices flowing in the right kind of ways. And, you know, again, 
dating back to, I think, last week's Ascension forecast, I kind of gave the analogy of like, you know, we've been rebuilding this car, right? We got all the pieces together and we're about to basically take it out for a test drive just to see what alterations we could make. And so our physical form being the car, being the vessel, we have this new energetic programming that we're now going to have to test drive. And so this isn't like we're hitting the we're hitting the road and we're going on, you know, a cross country tour or adventure. We're just taking a little bit of a quick trip around the block just to test out the new capabilities of this new car in which we've built. Again, there's going to be bugs that need to be ironed out. There's going to be areas where timing misfiring is kind of, you know, putting us in a tizzy. We are going to be able to bring it back into the garage, so to speak, give it a good once over fine tune the areas that we have deemed need a little bit more improvement before we're going to set off for good with this new car now kind of carrying us on this new path in this new quest in this new adventure. So there are going to be a lot of ascension symptoms that pop off this week, um, especially because we have new energies kind of coming in um, to help us anchor, to help us ground, to help us initiate, to help us build in our energy so that we can jump into this new chapter. But before I get to the ascension symptoms, of course, I have a couple of things that I'd like to talk about and address. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below, making it a very pretty page to actually scroll through. I want to thank those of you. And again, I never, you know, I, I never kind of push my services. I never really put it out there. Uh, but I want to thank those of you that took it upon yourself to send me financial donations. I know I kind of bitched a little bit about how YouTube has been kind of, you know, messing with my channel. And I did lose a whole hell of a lot of money over the last month or so of having YouTube kind of, you know, tweak the algorithm not in my favor. And so for those of you that took it upon yourself to send love in that kind of way, I want to thank you so much for your generosity. I want to thank you so much for the love and support. And of course, continuing to remind me of why I do this. And it's because of beautiful souls like you coming together and sharing around the support when that support is needed in whatever way we all feel that we can contribute to helping each other out. So I thank you so much for that as well. I want to also thank those of you, especially the new members that jumped over to my Patreon to take advantage of, you know, going back, listening to April's Zodiac forecast, all that paid content that becomes public once the month has come and passed. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over there. Um, huge influx of people jumping over to Patreon. That is where all of my VIP content is. That is where the community, uh, although I do love my YouTube community, but there's something just, you know, more in alignment with my Patreon community. I think we're all uh, kind of focused on the same thing and we're at the same kind of point in our healing journey. It just is a different vibe over there. So of course, if you feel the need, feel the calling to jump over to my Patreon, we would definitely love to have you. And again, just want to encourage those new members that you can access a lot of the previews for the paid content without actually becoming a paid subscriber. And of course, I cannot go by without giving a huge shout out for the love and support that my paying Patreons give me as well. You all are just the best people to have in my corner and I cannot thank you time and time again for the love, for the support. So if you have not downloaded your May Zodiac forecast as of yet, of course, you can access them individually from my website or access all 12 over on my Patreon. Uh, with this new moon coming up, of course, there's going to be a brand new episode of the moon guide that you'll have to stay kind of on standby for it will be released over the next couple of days as we kind of move into that new moon window. Uh, love the change in delivery and y'all seem to have some very positive feedback for this new moon guide. So thank you so much for that. We're going to continue onward with the new moon in Taurus. And the other thing that I just wanted to bring to your attention 
is that my booking calendar is open and available for May. I did bring back the mini reading from my original OGs just to kind of have a clear cut, quick, concise kind of response to some of the areas that are troubling you or answers that you're looking for. And although I wouldn't really recommend the mini reading for new clients, because again, new clients should be booking a 60 minute session so that we have time to go through your chart and really connect on the particular important points in your chart, we familiarize ourselves before you can kind of tap into those quick, fast, you know, reading responses. But nonetheless, the mini reading is there, is available for everyone to access in, if you're being called to. You know, I know a lot of people are struggling right now with uh, some very intense choices on their plate and sometimes some extra guidance is needed just to provide the clarity but of course we can't seem to come by ourselves so that is out there you can do with that with whatever it is that you want to do with that if you feel called to have some guidance and assistance i would be happy to help Okay, let's talk about the ascension symptoms that we are going to experience for this week. Now, I just feel the need to kind of remind, reiterate the point that we're in an adjustment period. Adjustment periods are never fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just ask you this. When you start a new job, do you ever feel good? Do you ever feel comfortable? Do you ever feel smart? I know I never did. And so... I'm saying this because there are some exciting things happening. It's exciting to start a new job. It's exciting to move. It's exciting to get into a new relationship. It's exciting to start new chapters, new beginnings. But it's also awkward as F. We're out of our comfort zones. We're out of our familiar environments. We are showing up as a version of ourselves that does not feel safe, secure, and anchored. And because this old version of self has just kind of, you know, pieced out and taken the exit, um, there's still a lot of lingering old version of self aspects still alive and well in our physical realms. And so over the course of this last week, and I know technically it goes back to eclipse season, but I think just with Taurus season being as I'm going to say heavy and weighted as it actually is in order to keep us kind of locked into our physical forms. A lot of people not having such a great time in their physical form, not having a such great time in their realities. And because of that, there's like this attitude of just blah, like blah, don't give an F, have a hard time caring, feel kind of numb, blah, 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 blah. There's also this huge group of people that is going through a, an extreme bout of depression right now. So let's just talk about the fact that depression is your ego avatar saying, you know what, I can't play this role anymore. I don't want to keep up this facade. I don't want these relationship dynamics. I don't want to pursue these goals anymore. When you find yourself in a state of depression, it is literally an indicator that a major change has to take place or else your ego self is going to essentially kill itself. And don't come at me. We're not talking about actual physical, you know, unaliving here, but the want, need, and desire to just not be you anymore, that is part of the process of doing the shadow work, having that breakdown, recognizing what it is that you don't like, what it is you no longer are attached to, what it is that you no longer want to experience. Because for many of us, we need to hit rock bottom in order to reframe our options and opportunities to make changes. And so there's a huge amount of people right now that just don't feel comfortable in their skin. They don't feel like they fit into their life anymore. They feel like they are essentially like imposter syndromes in the life that they once were very connected to. Please, please, please do not get down on yourself, okay? This is absolutely a natural part of the process of leveling up. We are, again, still very uncomfortable, still very unfamiliar with this new version of self. It is a huge indicator that if you are feeling blah, if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling uncomfortable in your own skin or feeling like you don't fit into the life in which you once fit in perfectly to, that this is the upgrade that you are currently going through. Because as I come to you here Friday evening, and first of all, thank you so much if you're live in the chat, uh, even if you're not, thank you so much for tuning in for the replay. Um, but like we have the moon in Pisces and the moon in Pisces, it, it has to bring up all of those heavy 
feelings, all of those depressive feelings. It has to bring up the heaviness and the weight of not being able to fit into an environment that you yourself had a hand in creating. The Pisces energy not only illuminates where it is that we want to die, where we want an ending, where we want a closure, but it is the spiritual change and transformation that we go through in order to prepare ourselves for a brand new chapter. And so the moon will be shifting into Aries energy over this weekend, and that is a brand new lunar cycle. That is essentially the inner emotional operating system now kicking in, trying to integrate and get in alignment with the physical form. And as the moon moves into this Aries energy, first of all, we have a beautiful aspect with Pluto, the great transformer himself that's currently retrograde in this Aquarius energy, giving us an opportunity to get our shit together, our inner realm energy. This is about whether or not we have power and control over our own damn selves. This is about us really realizing where it is that we have ants in our pants to kind of, you know, shed the layers of skin that are so heavy and are so weighted and are so uncomfortable at this point and a little bit too familiar. And the moon goes ahead and bumps into Mars, which is a big deal because Mars rules over that Aries energy and he's in his rulership in this Aries energy. And he just kicked off a brand new two year warrior cycle where right now we're building in this version of self. We're building a new tenacity, a new determination. We are building a new warrior type of attitude. We are building in the courage and the bravery that is needed in order to go and fight and slay these dragons. Dragons, the dragons being the old fragmented parts of ourselves that don't want us to grow, don't want us to evolve, would rather us continue to be where it is that we've been at in this depressive state. And of course, the higher self wants nothing to do with that. Mars and the moon coming together is kind of like, I don't know, a kickstart is like hitting that nitro button in your car where we're just like boosted to a new level of intensity. And it's coming at a beautiful time because of course, we're moving into a new moon in Taurus. So of course the new moon, it's the dark phase of the moon. It's going to make us sit in the darkness. It's going to force us to face our shadow selves because it's in the dark phase of the moon that we cut the cord, we cut the attachments. We realize what we don't want. We realize what we can no longer tolerate. And from that, a beautiful framework emerges on what we would prefer instead. And the minute that we have those realizations and the minute that we're building and cultivating in these inner passions, these inner desires, this inner courage to actually see the obstacles and the challenges through in order for us to end up at the end goal that end vision, that end dream, we have to realize what it is that we can no longer pour ourselves into. We have to reserve that energy into initiating something new. We're going to have these realizations. That becomes the new moon intentions that we are going to set, lock in, plant the seeds in the earth of, because of course, porous energy is fixed earth energy. It is where we're bringing these ideas, this magic, this imagination, this creativity into the physical form, into the physical body, into the physical environment. And so this week is going to be a Kickstarter of energies. But I'm going to give you this analogy because this is, you know, this is just something that may help you kind of interpret the energies, especially between, between Venus being in her rulership and Mars being in his rulership. So let's just say that the masculine and feminine energies, such as Mars and Venus, they decide to go out for a little drive, okay? It's a little Sunday drive. Now we're taking the scenic route because we wanna take in all the sights. We don't wanna rush, we don't wanna go too fast. We wanna just go at our own pace. Of course, Venus is over there in the passenger seat and she's just in love with nature's beauty and she's, you know, taking it all in and pointing out, you know, the cows in the field and the birds over the ocean and how beautiful the field is and the landscape is. Well, you have Mars over here driving this vehicle. Suddenly there's a car in front of him. They're going the same speed, but because there is a blockage and a challenge in front of him that basically dictates the pace that he's able to go, suddenly Mars has road rage. 
Okay, we're on a nice Sunday drive. We shouldn't be frustrated at all. He's going, the, the person in front of us is going the same speed, but yet now we're angered, right? Mars, he just wants to, he just wants to be the leader. He just wants to not be blocked by somebody else's pace. And suddenly the whole, you know, slow Sunday scenic route drive is ruined for Mr. Mars because suddenly he has to adjust his own inner energy to adapt to the flow of traffic, okay? Tantrum, childhood tantrum. Suddenly, he doesn't even want to be on this drive anymore. He just wants to get to the restaurant, okay? So now you get Venus over here trying to calm, be present, like, listen, we're having a great time. We don't have to get to the restaurant at any given time. Let's just enjoy ourselves. We're going to have a great time getting there. It's the it's like the journey, not the destination. And Mars is over here literally riding the ass of the car in front of him to get this car to move so that he can feel in control, he can feel in power. Okay, so we have those two particular energies happening inside of us all right now. Mars is ruling over our passion, our intensity, our action, the way that we're going to take action out in the world to actually get to that damn restaurant. Venus, on the other hand, she just wants to chill. She has the attitude of gratitude. Everything is beautiful. Everything is fine. It's a much slower pace. And so we have ants in our pants, but there's a part of us that knows that if we want this long-term goal and vision and dream to actually come into manifestation and fruition and actually be something that we can experience, we have to go one step at a time. We have to have patience. We have to operate from a sense of wholeness. We have to have the attitude of gratitude for all of the things that are happening in our favor and going well. And again, Mars over here ready to rip the, the head off of whoever is blocking him from not going the speed that he wants to go. And this is the anxiety. This is the anticipation. This is the bouts of frustration and rage that come up because everything is too slow for Mars. And we're really having to strive to hit a, I'm going to call it comfortable alignment and balance within us right now with these Yes, in cooperative energies, but also competing energies. We want the masculine and feminine energies to work together. That's how creation happens. But if you have ants in your pants and you're acting on impulse and you're hot headed and you're reacting to everything going on in your environment, you are not operating in your wholeness. You're not standing in your power. You're not operating from your heart space and you're sure as hell not going to create anything stable enough to last the long term. So this is where we kind of have to, you know, get our energies in check. Again, Pluto is is retrograde now testing us to see if we're going to allow, you know, other people's driving speeds set us off or if whoever says whatever is just going to send us in a tizzy. Remember, power struggles, that's Pluto's game, okay? He's going to illuminate the power struggles going on in our environment to see if we can rise above them. Meaning, can we act as the observer? Can we understand where it is that we're being challenged to get our own damn energy in check and therefore not give in to or play these games out in the external realm of agitation and activations coming at us? So we have a lot going on for sure, but this is a balancing act that we have to get into check because again, we're about to take this car out for a test drive. We can't just be jamming on the gas, okay? We can't push this car to the maximum. We have to be a little bit gentle, ease into it, if you will, because what happens is, is that if you take this newly rebuilt car out for a test drive and you step on the gas and you push this car into its most, I'm going to call it intense and optimal phase, you're going to hear those screws rattle. You're going to bust a head gasket. You're going to blow a couple of belts right off of that freaking motor, okay? You're going to cause some damage. If you go out and you take a slower pace and you increase that speed and you take notice and you're operating from a sense of awareness on the sensations of the vehicle or listening to certain sounds pop off, you're not going to put the car in an extreme place to have damage take place. You're going to be mindful enough to say, you know what? 
Um, I'm hearing something coming from the engine that doesn't seem to sound the way that it should. Maybe I should back off a little bit and fix it before I create an absolute shit show damaging situation where I'm going to have to rebuild this motor, right? So this is the maturity Venus and Taurus of slow and steady wins the race versus the immaturity of Mars being in Aries energy where impulse and urges of the egoic form reign supreme. So we're going to have to tame the beast, so to speak, in order for us to be operating from a stabilized energy, which of course Taurus season is trying to anchor us into. So yeah, I know I kind of got derailed there on a little bit of a tangent, surprise, surprise. But my whole point is, is that if you're feeling in a blah state, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling like you don't fit in, if you're feeling uncomfortable in your skin, congratulations, you are at the final stage of shedding the skin just as a snake would in order to emerge as your shiny, most beautiful self. The new moon in Taurus is going to pressurize you as, you know, that's how diamonds are formed. You're going to be pressurized in order to choose something different for yourself. That intensity, that pressure of wanting to just terminate who it is that you currently are is going to be overridden with your higher self. And you're going to see options and opportunities to make small and steady changes in order to free you from the constructs that the old version of self has created. Okay. So with that being said, breath work is a thing, okay? And like people underestimate breath work. Did you know that you don't have control over how fast the car is going in front of you? You don't have control of the absolute ignorant nonsense that a stranger spits off in the supermarket? Did you know that you don't have control over your personal relationships trying to take advantage of you and manipulate a better outcome for themselves? You don't have control over anything in this physical realm, except for your breath and the way that you choose to react or respond to the world around you. And if you're into breath work, that it, well, first of all, you should be. Secondly, you need to be. Thirdly, we're going through a purge state as we move into this new moon in Taurus. Breath work aligns all of the different systems. And right now, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but many of us are going through this period of having to do a very deep sigh. Okay, so let's all just take a pause. Let's all breathe in very deeply through our nose, counting to 10. And then when you get to that 10, hold your breath for three seconds and then out through your mouth, push out that air out of your lungs like you're trying to kill somebody across the table. Okay, don't worry about your breath. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's not get caught up in that. Don't get concerned if you're going to look like a weirdo. Just do it. And I want you to do that for three times. And I want you to feel the sensations, the energy shift, the change in your physical body when you are in control of your breath. Okay, so those deep sighs that just come on, like we have to take a deep breath to reset. This is aligning the higher self with the physical form. This is integrating all of the fragmented parts of self. This is purging, if you will, that old chi, that old manna, that old prana stuck in our lung space. We have to deep breathe. We have to engage the physical body. We have to oxygenate, oxygenate my apologies, the physical form. And so again, many of us don't even think about breathing which we really should, okay? Um, secondly, when you start thinking about breathing, you will realize that many of us are very shallow breathers. And what that does is, first of all, it doesn't allow enough clean oxygen into your physical form, and it doesn't allow your brain to operate as optimally as you could. And secondly to that, it creates a state of constant agitation where we could lose our shit and lose ourself in anxiety at any moment. Those shallow little breaths actually create a pattern uh, where anxiety can be triggered very easily, even if there's nothing mentally or physically to have anxiety over. And so breath work is super, super important. And I encourage you, especially as we move through this week, as we move through that new moon in Taurus, to get control over your breath. Okay, so 
hunger, let's talk about hunger for a second. First of all, we knew that our hunger or craving patterns were going to change, uh, mostly due to the fact that Taurus season and now with Venus and Taurus and of course Jupiter is in Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus, there is a lot of focus on the physical form. There's a lot of focus on creature comforts. There's a lot of opportunities for overindulgence, especially we're satisfying certain cravings or concern. Our dietary habits have changed since the last upgrade. Our cravings have changed because of it. Our spit, our saliva has changed because of it. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Drop me a, a comment below if, if the taste or the consistency of your spit has actually been noticeably changed for you. Uh, I'm not a betting girl, but 10 bucks says if you bring a little bit of awareness to that, you're going to realize that there's definitely been some changes in your spit. That is my indicator that, again, we're going through this uh, integration period and spit is a lubrication of sorts. And if we're talking about the car analogies, this is us just, you know, getting the clean oil moving through the system. It's getting, you know, all those particular pieces that were very rigid, all lubed up in a way. And because, you know, the soul, the spirit is very anchored into the breath and the breath and food and cravings and all of these things kind of uh, trigger our five senses, or at least one of them anyways. Um, again, Taurus season connects to the five senses through the physical form because we have to listen to the physical form in reaction to some of the experiences that we're allowing ourselves to have. And again, conjuring up visions, goals, and dreams in our mental plane in our heart space, allowing our physical body to react to that as well. Well, but the hunger pains, my goodness, I don't know, y'all let me know if I'm the only one here, but I've just been hungry. Even as I'm eating, I'm hungry. And as I'm eating, I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat next. And I'm not a big eater. And I'm still not. But like, at the same time, the oh, the over uh, the overly intense amount of focus on food, especially to through tourist season, uh, it becomes like I'm going to I'm going to call it an obsession. You know what I mean? Like there's just this our, our physical bodies are asking for substance. They're asking for nourishment. And, you know, again, make the best choice that you can with stuffing your face full of, you know, healthy foods and life energy force foods. But at the same time, we're feeding the machine. The Taurus energy very much rolls over the physical form, the physical vessel. And just as we rebuilt this, you know, new vehicle, if you will, you don't rebuild a vehicle with a full tank of gas in it and, you know, oil topped up and, you know, washer fluid topped up and all the fluids like hydraulic, like you don't build a car that way. The last thing that you do is you add all the fuels in it. So we're at the situation now because, again, it's just uh, not that far away that we're going to take this baby out for a test drive in our creative force energy. Um, we're kind of refueling, if you will, thus the over intense cravings, the intense just want, need, and desire to focus on that food. Um, that being said, how y'all sleeping? I've noticed a huge change in my own personal sleep habits and patterns um, in my clients as well. Everybody is sleeping a lot deeper, a lot more uh, restful, let's say, and for longer durations, which, whew, thank goodness we deserve that break. Um, but with sleep, and as we kind of talked about last week, our dreamscape is very strange, like very weird. Yes, we went through the spiritual upgrade. Yes, we're able to access higher dimensions, especially in the astral plane as well. But like the weird dreams, I'm not even talking like out of the box, like, you know, you're sitting at the table having a, having a nice meal with an octopus. We're not even that weird. We're talking about like real life flashbacks, situational flashbacks, merging of different aspects of your life that were very important to you and now being on missions and to do tasks and stuff in your dreamscape. It's a very, it's like going and living in another reality where you have mundane tasks and chores to complete. And then you wake up and they're still, you know, you might've done laundry in your dream, but lo and behold, you still have laundry to do when you wake up in this reality. And so that dreamscape has definitely changed and in correlation with the depths of the sleep, the rest that we're actually reaching, it's just an interesting dynamic to kind of observe and be aware of. Not so long ago, many of us could only get like three, maybe four hours of sleep in before we were up for a couple of hours and the rest was not there and we were waking up exhausted. And now we're waking up and having a hard time getting moving 
Because again, the, the, the sleep is so deep and, and the, the physical form is so heavy and so weighted and we're so present in the here and now that again, we're just readjusting to the materialistic realm that we're now being reintroduced to from this new version of self. So I want to talk about this week as far as managing your energy goes. And again, with Mars and Aries energy, it is always a hard thing to do to keep yourself in a check. Now, let me just talk about the fuel for a second. Um, the fuel that we're currently using is very different depending on where it is that you're at in your healing journey. I know many people right now are in using the fuel, the, sorry, the fuel of anger and frustration and agitation in order to get angry enough to actually make the changes that many of us have been hesitant and resistant and actually making and, and doing and changing. Um, that's not a bad fuel as long as you're not creating damage and destruction within yourself and around you. If you are angered to the point where you are lashing out to other people and you are agitated to the point where you're you know, doing things to yourself, like self-sabotaging behaviors. Again, Pluto retrograde, we have to examine where those self-sabotaging patterns even kind of got born from. Um, but if you're using that fuel to cause harm and damage and destruction, then shame on you, do better, boss up, okay? We're, we're too late in this game for you to be acting like the toddler that the Mars and Aries energy has us all activating in, inside of our energetic selves. We got to grow up. We got to do better. OK, you need to be using that anger, that frustration, that agitation as a fuel to keep you motivated and determined to do what you have to do to free yourself from the things, from the aspects, from the elements, from the attachments that are creating that particular energy force within you. That is the best way to use those darker, let's call them feelings in order to actually turn them into empowerment. Again, you always talk me, you always hear me talk about turning the darkness into light, turning that pain into power. Well, this is very much pain into power. It doesn't feel good to be angered and frustrated all the freaking time, okay? So use it as a positive fuel. Now there are a group of people out there that have done the work that are now using this, I'm gonna call it excited, inspired, motivated, energy as fuel. I hesitate to use the word, the word excited because it's not really excitement more as it is like a I'm damn well and determined going to see this through type of thing like the anticipation and excitement maybe of of, of finally being in the mood and attitude to feel uh, strong enough to actually make these changes. OK, we'll give it that. But like there's really not a whole lot of excitement going on. I would say that we are in the, the changing times, the changing period where we just we just can't settle anymore. Right. So if you want to label that excitement, then, you know, it, it is up to you what you want to label this energy as. But what I'm getting at here is that we're all using a certain fuel source in order to power and fuel this change, this transformation that we're all kind of all jumping in and initiating this week as we move through this new moon and Taurus energy. What I'm getting at here is that whether it's rage or excitement or just downright like manic episodes, there's going to be bouts of it. It comes on really fast. The good news is, is that it dissipates just as quick. But again, this is another test to see how in control we are over the energy that manifests in our physical body. So yeah, there might be extreme intensities rising to the surface where suddenly we're just overwhelmed with whatever labeled, you know, emotion you want to give it. But how quick are we to stabilize in that? How quick are we to realize that that even if it's a good emotion, that we have to tame it down because if we act on impulse or get too carried away, we're going to mess things up and we just don't have that kind of opportunity being gifted to us anymore. We're in the year of eight. It's time to stop messing around. We got to boss up in big ways. And energy management is the first indicator on whether or not we're going to be successful when given the opportunity to actually co-create our own realities here in the next couple of months. And so again, it's almost like if we're taking the, the car out for a spin just to test drive it, are we going to let 
a brand new 16 year old driver who has zero experience and zero connection to the car and to the sensory output of what you know not so nice sounds in a car are actually going to signal to us are we going to let that be the test driver or are we going to let a seasoned mechanic or a seasoned you know driver of sorts who knows the experience who speaks the language of cars who understands the let's call it vibrations and frequencies and what that would indicate in a car to do the test drive so it's very much like are we going to act mature and understand as exciting as it is to have this new nitro put into our car that it's probably not the best time to stomp on the gas and hit that nitro button and use it not in the testing phase when we're confident that all the nuts and bolts have been put back together and that you know the engine isn't going to blow up on us yeah when we're gifted with the green light go ahead to take a road on the road for for forever then yeah we're going to test the parameters of what this car is actually made of but in a testing period the last thing we're going to do is let an overzealous uncontrolled driver take this vehicle out for the test drive and so we have to get ourselves in check Okay, so there's been a lot of tension in the headspace. Now again, Mercury rules over the headspace. Mercury is direct. He's trying very hard to kind of keep focus, keep concentration on what needs to be done. We're going to be free and clear of this post retrograde shadow period on the 13th, but it's not happening this week, which means that it's going to be very challenging to keep focus, to keep concentration on what we need to do what we need to pursue what we have to create what we have to kind of act upon it is going to be very hard to keep that focus keep that concentration but the pressure in our heads with all these different ideas and all these different things that we want to explore and we want to experience it gets to be a little bit much I hate to call it a headache because I don't think it is. It's just a head pressure. We feel the building of energies in our pressure. We're feeling it in our jaw. We're having, you know, rigid jaw clicking or, you know, grinding of the teeth or, you know, we're just we're experiencing teeth pain or gum issues, throat clearing. All of this is just energy above the neck that is just raring to go, but we don't have a place to actually like get it out yet. And, you know, especially the pressure building in the throat, because, again, there's a lot of throat clearing, trying to, you know, get our voice back, trying to take a firm, let's call it, approach with what needs to be done and what needs to be said. Uh, that throat energy is manifesting in some soreness, some stiffness, some rigidity in that neck space. Again, the Kundalini energies that travel up through our spine gets to the base of our neck and then always encounters problems before entering into the head space and triggering the pineal gland, which of course is going to release those chemical reaction in order to give you a bigger, broader perspective, awareness, and level of enlightenment that allows you to see things from a different set of eyes. And so there's some hesitancy there. And a lot of that is just because we're in Taurus season, we're very connected, very rooted to the physical form. We're not really as, I don't want to say emotional or intuitive or spiritual, because that's not the thing. Like we always have those things. But again, like the Taurus energy being about the physical body, being about the physical realm, we're more connected to logic and practicality, evidence, proof, tangibility, a matter of fact in our faces then we are like willing to explore different concepts and you know push ourselves into like the collective's energies and stuff like we're just trying to get comfortable within ourselves we're not really looking to like advance or push ourselves too far into like a new level of spiritual awareness at this time we're just looking to get comfortable in the physical form and allow our physical body and our five senses and our sensory input situation to kind of dictate for us what it is that our physical body needs from us again this is a time of stabilizing we need to nurture and nourish our physical bodies back to a place of health and wellness before we advance and move on to the headspace to advancing our ideas which try Trust me, you're going to want to enjoy this time because once we move into Gemini season and Jupiter moves into Gemini, you're going to wish that you didn't have as much to focus on, as much pushing you to learn to new topics and themes, as much pressure in that headspace. You just want to want to kind of come back to Taurus season and chill, you know, get that vibe and try to find a peace and contentment within you. So enjoy it while it's happening because, again, it's very short lived and once we move into Gemini season, we're going to be all over the place. Um, okay, so in our physical bodies, 
because again, Taurus season, that's what it's all about. Uh, we're feeling a change within our physical bodies, but we're also feeling a change within our own selves. There's a new level of self-worth emerging. We are valuing and loving ourselves from a different lens, a different perspective, if you will. We're feeling the mood, the attitude of gratitude grow. We're, see we're starting to appreciate ourselves and the struggles that we've gone through because we're starting to realize where it is that we're actually aligning with a brand new strength within us and that never feels bad you know it's one thing if you're, you're like the incredible hulk and you're using that energy to create damage and destruction it's another thing when you are tapping into the ability to be a superhuman and actually create good in the world. And that's what we're trying to tap into right now. So this like new sense of self, this new sense of self-worth, this new sense of value, this new sense of like really appreciating ourselves, it's all a part of raising our vibration, our awareness, our frequencies, so that this new version of self can feel more empowered to take control and to take the lead. But in our physical forms, you may be noticing some foot issues, feet issues. Uh, mostly it's one side over the other. So that's why I said foot. Um, but we're, you know, we're in Taurus season. We're trying to gain a new footing. We're trying to gain our bearings. We're trying to stabilize. But that manifests in maybe not feeling as safe and stable and secure on our two feet as we were hoping we would. Maybe you're losing your balance. Maybe you're tripping over yourself. Maybe there's an itchiness in the bottom of your foot that you just can't seem to scratch. It is kind of, I'm going to say, radiating up the leg as well we're having like pins and needles in our lower extremities and again this is a, just a reminder that the energy of mother earth Gaia herself has shifted and our feet connect with mother earth and that is what creates the conduit for us to be the energetic vessels if you will to translate the energies not only from the earth to the cosmos from the cosmos back to the earth we're the vessel that all the energy has to go through and so we're just trying to find a comfortable position we're trying to stabilize we're trying to strengthen our position in this new physical form in this new environment but because of that we are going to be kind of illuminated to where it is physically speaking we're not feeling as stable as balanced as safe and secure as we would like the pins and needles are the energy trying to adapt to the new energies of mother earth there's like a jolt there again just think about building this car and now we're taking like an electric meter and we're testing all of those electric areas to make sure that the battery is operating well that the alternator is rotating at the rpms in which we need it to we are just testing out all the spark plugs we are testing out our electrical system thus the waves of pins and needles now mostly it is being experienced in the lower extremities however if you're having it in the upper extremities especially from your shoulders like down your arms into your hands that is due to the palm chakras again needing refinement activation authority before we move into creator timing creator testing period let's say um, so all of these sensations are just very heavily indicative that a major change, a major transformation in our meridians are also changing as we're integrating this new soul energy into this physical vessel, into this physical form. The itchies can, you know, be found in all different areas of the body, not just in the bottom of the feet, but it is an itch that can't be itched. And again, itching is a good sign of healing. So pay attention to where the itch that can't be itched or scratched is actually you know making itself known in your physical form because that in itself can be very indicative on the chapter that you're currently healing from that you're growing out of that you're ready to close the door upon again just a reminder we're feeling very heavy we're feeling very weighted there's i'm gonna say I'm going to say there's limited energy. Now, that may be a contradiction with the energy burst that Mars and Aries sporadically is giving us. But overall, like it takes more effort to get your ass up off the coach. It takes more effort to get that laundry, you know, changed over. It takes more effort to do all of the little things that normally we're not aware of needing or requiring this much energy. 
Again, it's just the physical form. We're adapting to this materialistic realm, to the energy, the weight, to the gravity of what this materialistic realm actually means, especially for the physical energy that we need to kind of muster up and exert in order to get these things done. It may feel like you're underwater, 500 pounds, trying to run underwater at times, but nonetheless, we are building and strengthening in the physical form. I would say just to pay attention to the dry patches, you're not going to have like full out, you know, blown, full blown dry systems. However, whether you have dry lips, maybe a dry patch of skin on your elbow, maybe, you know, your, your scalp, because we just went through a lubrication change of oils, maybe your scalp is dry and itchy. There's all kinds of different, you know, areas of the body where we're going to see these dry patches kind of form. And again, a huge indicator when you know, you know, the energy system and the chakra system that is giving you hints and clues on what needs your attention from here. Um, we are just being just super aware that we're not in a rush and that we're not acting on impulse. Again, I'm talking about Mars and Aries energy because there's minor little incidences and accidents that can happen with Mars in Aries energy, especially to the hands or the head. And we want to avoid, you know, not we, we want to avoid rushing because that's when accidents happen. But we also want to avoid uh, being detached from our physical form because when you are going low and slow and steady and you have a sense of awareness over your physical form, you're less likely to create accidents or find yourself in incidences that are going to inflict pain and trauma upon you. And so we just have to be a little bit mindful right now that there is an energy pushing us into hurrying, pushing us into like racing to the next thing. And again, thank you, Mars and Aries energy. But again, a the, the test is how much we actually have power and control over simmering those particular energies down, becoming more present, grounded and rooted in the physical form and kind of avoiding some of the situations that could definitely leave us with a lot of injuries. The last thing that I'm going to leave you with, and again, probably plays in earlier to the whole like bouts of rage or excitement or mania, if you will, like just these energy bursts, just keep a check on your blood pressure. We are going to have some blood pressure activations here this week, especially as we move through the new moon in Taurus. We have to expect a spike in order for there to be a drop in order for us to find a new common middle ground, a new balancing point, if you will. And you're definitely going to feel your blood pressure shift because there's going to be moments where you are realizing you are like running hot. Maybe you're excited or agitated or whatever the case may be. You're just feeling the sudden shift in your mood and your attitude. And therefore your physical body responds with an elevation in blood pressure. Again, this is a test to see how easy it is for you or not easy, depending on where it is that you're at to gain control over your physical body, breath work, stabilizing, focus, concentration. You got to get your shit together. You got to get in alignment. If you want the power and the authority to use your creator abilities here on this physical earth plane, you best be demonstrating to yourself and to the cosmos that you have your shit together. You have control over yourself and you know exactly what to do when you find yourself in a certain energetic state that could be very, let's call it dangerous of acting on impulse and urge. So again, we're being tested. We're taking this car out to test it. You are going to have multiple triggers and activation to test you, especially as we approach this new moon. Expect triggers and activations to put you in situations to realize a, where it is that you're, again, allowing your external realm and reality have too much power over you, and B, uh, testing how much power you actually have to reel yourself in, to calm yourself down, to stabilize yourself in moments when, you know, there are triggers and activations out there trying to get the best of you. This is going to be super revealing on what it is that we need to do, what we have to practice, what we have to work upon, what we have to kind of get in check as we move through the new moon in Taurus and we start bringing to life new foundations, new structures for us to take this test drive upon. 
So guys, I think that is all that I have to share for this week. Of course, I thank you so much for showing up, for showing love, for showing support uh, my way. I thank you so much. Uh, but also, like, thank you for showing up for yourself. Let's let's all just take a moment. Let's give ourselves some love. Let's give ourselves some support. Let's give ourselves some encouragement. We so often are easily able to give it away to other people, but we have a hard time giving it to ourselves. And so this is part of building ourselves up and befriending ourselves and standing in our power. So as much as I want to thank you for showing up for me, I also want to sh thank you for showing up for yourself. I hope you have a beautiful week, a beautiful new moon. I send you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.